When did you start writing music for yourself? Pretty early. I mean, when I, as soon as I started writing, as soon as I learned how to play the guitar or saxophone, I started writing for myself. Um, and not very well, but that was always a priority for me to write. Um, to be creative with the skill set that I was learning. I, I did very little learn, uh, like learning covers or learning other people's songs. I really shied away from that, um, probably to my detriment a little bit, because I, I never wanted to learn other people's songs. And then when you're in school for it, you know, you have to do a lot of writing. Um, so it kind of went from there. And after I got out of college, I started a couple different bands. None of them I was writing songs for. And The Beginner was really, sounds funny, but that was the first record I ever wrote songs for. Um, kind of out of necessity. It's definitely sort of a accidental songwriter, but it, it's something I've really embraced and really love. Why out of necessity? Say that again? Uh, what, you said you had to write out of necessity? Yeah, but yeah because um, without too much backstory, I started a label with the idea that we'd have a house band and, and we'd bring people in to make records for them. But that requires an awful lot of trust from an artist and we really didn't have the experience or hadn't demonstrated that we were worth that trust. And so instead of trying to convince an artist to, to come to us, um, it made the most sense for me to make a record to sort of demonstrate what the team could do. And so I sort of volunteered to make the record and said, I'll make a record in my own name. I've been wanting to do that anyway. I said, okay, great. Put the dates on the calendar and then write the songs. Okay. And let's see. It was also the Space Bomb records you just yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Um, it's also, I've read that you wanted to be community centers. Mm -hmm. um, what does that exactly mean? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's sort of like, uh, I think the, the best records to me, the most exciting records are records that take, that take a team to make, you know. Um, I think of records like uh, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On or, or Beach Boy's Pet Sounds and, and uh, or a lot of those like Simon and Garfunkel, late, late Simon and Garfunkel records or Beatles records. Um, they, you know, those records have a team working on them. They have, they have this, you know, whatever the central players are and then they have orchestrators and arrangers and then string section, the horn section and, and a producer who's sort of organizing all of that stuff and and I think music is music as a as a medium is really effective in that way it, it, it becomes you know people have always played music in big groups that's as old as time probably literally you know and and it's really powerful in that way and in the past in the 60s and 70s labels worked a lot like that they they were the they were the, uh, uh, they were facilitating music in a different way than they are now in the sense that it was very vertically integrated business. They decided who the artists were, then they decided what the songs were, <laughs> and then they decided who the producer was, and he decided who the players were, and then he facilitated the sessions and off they went. And I think there's something really powerful to that. And, and we all, I'm also fortunate enough to, to have that capacity, to have the capacity to do that stuff in Richmond. There's a lot of really good musicians there. Um, so that's why we organize Space Bomb. We organize Space Bomb to invite people to come in, to work with our brain trust of musicians, which is really four people. It's me and Cameron Ralston who plays bass, Princeton Chancel plays drums, and Trey Pollard does string arrangements, and also does some production work. And those guys, and myself, we work together to, to formulate what the core of a record is going to be. And then we, you know, whether it's my record or whether it's Natalie Prass's record or whatever, 
and then we invite. We write the arrangements, I write the horn arrangements, Trey writes the string arrangements, and then we invite musicians to come in and, and be a part of that and, and play the music we write. And, and it becomes a very community event. At the end of the day, I, mean, I think there's 40 people that played on my new record. A lot of that is because they play in big sections, but it still is a nice feeling to have that amount of human energy on a song. And, uh, you know, Motown did the same thing and Phil Spector did the same thing. They didn't think of it as a community event, but when you look back on it, that is what it, that is what it was. And there's always an economy to it and there's a, a, it is a business and it is a work of art. It's very serious, but it's, it, it is at the, also at the end of the day, a time for people to, to play music together. And, and I feel like that's what my music is about. That's what Space Sounds music is about. It's about facilitating human relationships, whether that's me and you talking here, whether that's me performing for an audience, whether that's someone buying my record and listening to it at home, whether that's me in the studio with lots of people. It's all about music being shared between people and, and music made by people. Do you think that's something that lacks in other record companies these days? Uh, I don't think it's something that's better. I just think it's something that I prefer. So like, uh, and, and sometimes that sort of music, that sort of shared relationship is different. I mean, EDM is a good example. In its conception, it isn't particularly human to human. There's, not a, there's not, definitely not 40 people in the studio making that music. But when it's shared, it's very, it's very community oriented. And that's about the other end of the spectrum from what we're doing. But you know, I think that's, that, but that is where music finds its home, it is where it affects the community. And that music has found a home because there's a, a vast community that experiences it together in the same way. So that's really cool. <clears throat> I'm not particularly interested in making that kind of music, but it doesn't, um, what I don't, I don't view what I make as better. I just view it as what I prefer to make, and I prefer to make music like that. So that's what I choose to do. And so you, um, you wrote your first album in this way, yeah. and the second one as well. Then yeah, pretty much. Uh, but what was the starting point for the second album, Fresh Blood? What do you mean? What was the starting? Well. Point? Um, uh, at what moment did you sit down and think, hey, I'm going to make my second record now? Or how did it um, come together, I guess? Well, there's all, you know, I always feel like it's good to get down the road a little bit on it as soon as you can. So I started thinking about it and making notes about it pretty early on. Um, and uh, as that moved into, you know, as we got done with touring big, for Beginner, it, you begin to kind of start the clock a little bit. Um, so basically I worked on Beginner, I mean on Fresh Blood from February 1 to October 1. Um, that's kind of the official time. Um, once I started in February, I had a long list of production ideas and reference points and uh, recording ideas, engineering ideas all that kind of stuff. I was bringing that to the table, but I started writing songs loosely in January, but really in February, March, April. Um, and spent time on the songs and spent time in pre-production with the band and learning the songs and sort of fleshing out what we were actually going to be playing and, and working on arrangements. And then July, August, September was in the studio with the band and then with the strings and with the horns, with the choir, with guitars, lead vocals, all the other stuff. And what was the first song that you started writing for Fresh Blood? The oldest song is probably Circle Around the Sun, but none of, I, did, I didn't, when I started writing in February, I didn't have anything finished. Circle Around the Sun, Feeling Good is Good Enough, a little bit of Holy Moly, we're all half finished. So I brought, I brought those to the table first and, and finished those. There were some others that were finished too, but they didn't end up making the record. But those, those few made the record. And, and Circle Around the Sun is pretty old. I mean, it's not old. It's like from post-beginner. But pretty soon after I finished beginner, I wrote 
one of the verses and a chorus, and I thought it was pretty cool and just hadn't finished the lyrics. <laughs> 